economy, people do many things. This woman does a number of things. As you know, she's been working with us. She's a documentary filmmaker. She's doing a piece on the Mount Vernon, uh, the redevelopment of Mount Vernon, uh, and it's even opened some doors for us there to do some investigative reporting. She does that. She is, uh, and it, she does a, a lot of, I guess it's, it's quasi-medical work where she teaches people wellness kinds of things, but she also, and uh, not so much in his spare time, is an accomplished jazz singer who's appearing tonight in Ta Tajin on 221 West 38th Street. Please welcome Janelle Alperton. Good morning. Good morning. Can you hear me okay? Oh, I can hear you okay. You do so many things. I use up a, half the interview to explain. What else do you do? <laughs> you juggle? <laughs> you know. Well, I, I appreciate your mention of, of my being a hot singer. I'm, I may... I may modify that to say that I'm the type of jazz that I sing is cool, uh, kind of what we know as um, West Coast straight ahead stand, yeah. you know, American standards. Right, so, so, so we can call it fire and ice. You could. I like that. <laughs> fire and ice. Now, how long have you been singing in addition to everything else? When did you take up jazz singing to be good enough to be uh, invited to a, a club like Tajin's? Well, I first started singing, like most people, um, I started singing in church, in the church choir. My mm -hmm. parents were involved in the music ministries in church. So there really was no escape. I got dragged to choir practice as a child, and I begged the director to let me perform in the Hallelujah Chorus for Christmas. And um, wow. she didn't want me to, but uh, I kept pestering her, and she let me in, and I, I was hooked. And so you've been singing off and on then for just a few years, because we know you're like 12, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm very new to music. It's funny you say fire and ice, because uh, that was the way people describe the the, uh, the style of Yasha Heifetz, the great violin player. Yes. And yes. Um, one of his students, Derwin Landis, was my violin teacher. So my background is classical um, chamber music, and I, I started with chamber music and went into uh, snare drum in concert band for five years and choir in, in college. I never saw myself as a soloist until now, recently. Now, are you telling me you can play the violin? Yes, I, I actually segued from that into the viola, and I, I was in a chamber group for some years. Do you know, did you see that movie? It's maybe three years old now, but in fact, it was one of uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman's last movies about. And, it, wasn't, it was critically acclaimed, but wasn't well watched because it was creepy, which I like. It was about a, uh, a, a chamber group, a quartet, a chamber group, and uh, you, 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 you could spend your money on worse things uh, than renting that terrific movie. I'd love to see that one. I did see the quartet about the opera quartet. No, this is different. This is about the uh, chamber group. Ah, uh, nice. I'd love to see that one. Then, of course, there's the Red Violin, but that's a different movie altogether. Okay, well, you know, I'm not as smart as you are. We're talking with Janelle uh, <laughs> and she's appearing tonight at Tajin's on the 221 West 38th Street. Uh, that's the northwest corner, and she's going to be there from 6 to 9, singing standards, uh, doing jazz in a cool way. Now, you're accompanied by some pretty cool musicians themselves, aren't you? Oh, yes. Um, I have Mark Dane, who I call my musical spouse. He's a great guitar player. He's uh, got his own gypsy jazz band called Gypsy Jazz Caravan, and he's also in a country band with Babs Wynn called Miss Babs and her Kickin' Boogie Band. Um, if you get on Facebook and look up my page, uh, Janelle Jazz Singer in Y, I promote um, both Mark's band and Miss Babs' band. I love this woman. She's fabulous. Now, hours tonight. Uh, do you do three different sets, four short sets? How will you manage a three-hour gig? Three hours actually goes very fast for me. I typically sing 45 to 50 minutes and take a short break. Um, not because I need to. I could do 90 minutes straight, but the musicians get a little worn out. So we like to keep them fresh, and we do three sets of like that. And then afterwards, we sit around and have dinner and hang out, and it's, it's a lot of fun. But I also want to mention, if I could mention two other live events, um, there's, I'll be back at Tajin on November 6th, which is the first Thursday of the month, same time, 6 to 9. So if you can't make it tonight, come by the first Thursday of November. And also November 15 in Mount Vernon, 
I will be welcoming my life coach who has really helped me get in touch with my inner artist. And this is really the bottom line of why I started singing jazz. Because when we get in touch with our inner artist, it is how we heal and we repair ourselves from the wear and tear of daily life. And my daytime job specialty is stress management. And for me, my inner artist sings, and I encourage my clients to get in touch with what their inner artist does, because that is where we heal and experience um, the joy of, of being human. Now, if, if I can just back up, since you brought this up, now I'm going to drill down a little bit into this issue. Again, we're talking with uh, Janelle Albert, and she's appearing tonight at Tia Tajin in New York City, singing jazz. Uh, that's 221 West 38th Eighth Street. Uh, she... Uh, spends a great deal of time here in Mount Vernon. She is, of course, uh, a documentary filmmaker as well, and she's working with us on a uh, investigative review. Uh, for her, it's a story. For us, it's an investigative one about the uh, Memorial Field in Mount Vernon and how money's being spent to build that field and what, what the progress is. But, but moving into what you just talked about, I would imagine that someone's inner artist, it, it, their art could be anything. For example, my question to you is when you sing jazz, you actually feel better when you're done. Is it therapeutic for you? Is it cathartic? It's absolutely cathartic, um, and music has always been cathartic for me. I just didn't have the confidence to be a, a jazz solo singer. But what's more the point is when I don't do this, music in particular, I start to feel myself sliding into a funk or depression. Oh, sure. Yeah, I, you know, because of the reason I mentioned that, you know, I, I play uh, over 30 hockey with a number of fellows who, great jobs, dentists, you know, do, do all kinds of different things, uh, from construction to driving mail trucks to, to doctors. And everyone says that for them, when they're done, they feel much better, it's easy to go about the world, and they may even have other hobbies. Um, but for them, it's playing hockey. It doesn't have to be singing or writing or anything. It can be any hobby. Or, or thing that gets you in touch with, that allows you to express yourself, I would say. Definitely. It could be um, caring for children. It could be um, painting on a construction job. I mean, it, absolutely anything. It has to do with focus and um, it just enjoying the moment that we're in. The, the book Flow is a great book I recommend. It's the thing in the world to stay in the moment. That's why I love dogs. Yes. They, they're always right there. You know, they, <laughs> yes, yes. Not worried about tomorrow. So one more time, tell us what you're going to do tonight at the Jeans. Oh, it's American Standards. It's the kind of music that I just love, um, composed and performed from the 1920s to the 1960s. I stick with the, the swing and, and the bossa from the 60s in Brazil and blue, a little bit of blues. And uh, oh, anything, you know, a lot of the uh, songs that were pop, tunes in the 1930s, which the jazz bands took over and it reinterpreted in a jazz style. I can't believe, Scott wants me to ask you what you'll be wearing when you sing. <laughs> it's incredible, he's like this, but you know, I, I, I'm indifferent. I love you too, Scott. You're adorable. <laughs> Isn't he though? I like to wear I like to wear the long, you know, like evening gowns, kind of invoking the Ella Fitzgerald, Billie Holiday elegance. Um, but a couple of my stylist friends get mad at me and they tell me I, I should wear something shorter and show more of my legs. That's what Scott says. For me, I'm <laughs> interested in the art, right? And, you know, it's, uh, well, why would you wear something? Well, I'll ask you, Scott, why would you wear anything short? Why would I or why would I not? Why would you, he says. Oh, I do. I, I, I have some things that are, um, that I would only wear over a pair of short shorts, just ah, so I feel okay. protected. Okay, at least now he feels a lot better now. But listen, I want to wish you have a great show tonight, folks. Uh, Janelle, you see she's a very eclectically talented woman. Uh, Janelle Albritton, she's appearing at Tajine tonight. It's 221 West 38th Street. So you'll have a good time. And they serve dinner even after the show, if I heard you right at 9 o'clock. Janelle, thank you very much. Thank you so much. We'll talk later. Bye. We'll talk to you later. 8.33. Scott, you hate me, don't you? Yes. Because you still do your thoughts through me. <laughs> with only me. Because I don't. I have nothing to do with any of that. Sometimes I love myself. I really do. 8.34. <laughs> At least that makes one of you. Okay. Yeah, no one else I am does. outing myself to the listeners that I am. <laughs> I just hope they're smart enough to realize that. Of course they are. Yeah. <laughs> you don't think they're so right? 
the transparency. But once again, remember me as a newsman. All I see, carbon-based life forms. Sure. No difference between the men and the women of the world when I'm doing the news. I didn't say what happened when the news is over. It is 834. Speaking of the news, we, uh, we've been moving around Professor Jack Breslin because he's traveling, and I do think he'll be calling in. And just... <laughs> 